x equals the opposite of b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Or Sokotoa, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. All these are mnemonic devices that you guys have probably heard in math class to help you remember the quadratic formula, order of operations, or trigonometric ratios. I don't know about you guys, but I still find myself making the same tiny errors in math class and losing those little points on tests and quizzes. But at least my, res my math errors didn't result in 1,513 people freezing to death in the frigid waters of Newfoundland. Nor did it result in 113 people being pulverized by a massive walkway collapse in the Hyatt Regency Hotel. Imagine if you knew that your math calculations would affect thousands of people. Would it affect your attention to detail? Well, today I'm going to talk to you about how seemingly trivial math calculations resulted in the sinking of the Titanic in 1912 and the collapse of the Hyatt Regency Hotel walkway in 1981. First, I'm going to tell you what was incorrectly calculated and then how the disaster could have been averted. So, let us start with the Titanic. The Titanic had two main flaws that resulted in its sinking in 1912. The first was that Ed Smith was speeding through notoriously glacial waters on a particularly dark night. According to Justin Ewers, writer for U.S. News and World Report, the boat was traveling at 22 knots, or 23.5 miles per hour, when it should have been traveling at half that speed through, through those waters. To understand my next point, I have a video. As you can see here, the boat was coming head on towards the glacier, and as it was moving towards the glacier, the captain knew that he wouldn't be able to avoid it completely, so he did what any person would do, right? He tried to veer to the side, and, but as a result, the glacier just ended up scraping along the side of the boat, puncturing holes into, at, different, at various points in the side of the boat. Now how the boat stays afloat is there's each of these compartments, and there's 12 of them, and mathematically it makes sense that if six of them are filled with water, the boat can stay afloat. Anything more than half, then the boat will begin to sink. Well, because he scraped along the side of the boat, the glacier punctured holes into seven of the compartments, resulting in the boat sinking. Where's the math error, you might ask? Well, the Captain Smith knew that he wouldn't be able to avoid the glacier completely because the way that the Titanic had been built, they sacrificed some of its some of it's being nimble for space for passengers. So he should have known, so Captain Smith should have known that he wouldn't be able to avoid the glacier completely. And he should have run into the glacier. And according to the book Pop Culture of the 20th Century America, he should have run into the glacier head on, which would have only collapsed three compartments, and the boat would have been able, still been able to stay afloat. The boat might not have been as functional, but at least the people would not have had to drown. The next problem with the Titanic was that there were simply not enough lifeboats. As you can see here, there were 2,223 passengers on the boat and 60 people per lifeboat. So doing the long division that I learned in second or third grade, I found that you get 37 necess or 38 necessary lifeboats to hold all the passengers. However, in order to save space on the deck, Captain Smith decided to only bring 20 lifeboats. Considering he didn't come home that night while he was freezing in the water, he probably had to reevaluate that decision. Now, fast forward 69 years to the collapse of the Hyatt Regency Hotel walkway in 1981. Yet another instance where engineers did not pay attention to the tiny details and resulted in a large disaster. One Sunday afternoon at a dance competition, people were standing on these walk walkways watching the competition below them. Neither, little did they know that these walkways were neither structurally nor mathematically sound. As you can see here, uh, on the left I have a picture of how the walkway was supposed to be held up, and on the right I have a picture of how it was actually built. On the left, as you can see, each nut is holding up the platform above it. 
according to Rolls Holman Institute of Technology, that was correct, and that's how much weight the nuts were supposed to hold. But as you can see on the right, that's not how they built it. Nut one, while they may look the same, here nut one is actually holding both of these platforms, while on the right it would have only been holding one. As a result, it was holding twice the weight of what it was supposed to, and this platform collapsed onto the platform below it, which collapsed onto the ground below it, and killed 113 people and injured 180 more. And that was the result. So, in conclusion, today I've told you how small math errors have caused the large disasters on the sinking of the Titanic and the collapse of the Hyatt Regency Hotel walkway. I would like to think that engineers before constructing their potential death traps at staggering heights or in glacial waters would check to make sure their math is correct. Well, maybe someone should create a mnemonic device for engineers, like make structure sound so we don't fall to the ground. And still, it's intriguing to see how small changes can make such a significant difference in structures like these. So next time you're in math class, just think that your attention to detail could save thousands of lives. No pressure. Improvements? Improvements. It was really good, but I think that you did look down at your note cards a little too much. And why is that important? Because you lose focus. Okay. In the beginning, you look like you had a little bit of problem with your visual aid. You kind of were fidgeting. But other than that, just try and come in and practice if you have like a PowerPoint or something with multiple slides so you don't have that problem. Okay, hey, positive things. things. did a lot of research and you knew what you were talking about and that made it easier for us to follow along with you. Thanks. Thank you.